Sarah Bruce and welcome to EHI TV, eHealth Insider's essential news on video. Today I'm joined by Jeremy Nettle, Head of Health Sciences at Oracle and also Chair of Intellect's Health Group to talk about this week's emergency budget. First of all, welcome Jeremy, thank you for joining us on the show. Thank you Sarah, it's a pleasure to be here. Thank so, you. what did you make of this week's emergency budget? Was it as expected? Well, I think that um, uh, the Evening Standard last night, uh, just after the budget, I think uh, sort of um, summed it up in, in typical uh, tabloid. Uh, if you can see that, it says uh, tax and acts. But uh, from our point of view, um, it's actually been quite helpful. There are areas, of course, for corporations that isn't good news, but for some of our SMEs, there is positive news in tax allowances and tax benefits. So, um, I mean, I think... Um, so to sum up uh, from, you know, from an IT perspective, capital allowances, R&D, uh, capital gains and public sector and investment in broadband is all very positive. Mm -hmm. um, and moving on to the NHS, we all know the NHS is meant to be protected from um, spending cuts. Can it really be immune when there are such deep cuts as well? Uh, I don't think it would be immune, and I think that if you, in fact, you did a survey uh, earlier in the year of um, IT directors, and I think that if you're an IT director in, a, in the NHS, I think you're going to see that um, your budgets have been slashed. And I know when I spoke about this before, um, people didn't believe that I said there will actually be increased spending. There has to be increased spending uh, this year. Uh, and it will be a very strong chief executive that uh, makes that uh, decision. And I say this because we've got this um, uh, 20 billion uh, pounds worth of savings. And if you think about that in any way, shape or form, um, you may get you may get half of it through efficiency savings, uh, but what does the other half of it come from? And if ever there was a time to think of restructuring, this is it. And that is the question, where does the other half come from? Where do you see trust investing in IT? What kind of technology do you see them investing in and how, do you, how can they build a business case for that? Well, of course, one of the things that um, uh, all governments are interested in, this particular government is... Um, government's interested is the information to make decisions and this is why bravely I say that uh, there'll be um, I see a big increase um, in IT investment uh, probably not initially I think you know will be procurement blind for at least six maybe nine months but there will be a time uh, that you have to make the decision now how do you make answering your question um, is quite simply in as much that we will have to do things differently with other care organisations. And do you think there's a concern there, though, that the investment could be in kind of quick fixes, um, really quick return on investment, that kind of thing? Yeah, I think that, in fact, probably um, if you look out on uh, uh, quite a lot of procurements coming through at the moment, um, are very much quick fixes to um, satisfy the immediate or not knowing where the cuts are coming in the next uh, year or two. And of course the VAT, increasing VAT, uh, though it's only 2.5% and you could argue you know, on 100,000, 2.5% is small. However, it's still increased. A lot of organisations, if you have a service contract, don't pay VAT anyway. Um, but I think that you will see some quick fixes. You will see people trying to get under the covers fast um, and try and get solutions in. Um, I think that... Um, that is, uh, that's short term, that short term is, is, isn't going to be that successful because what I'm uh, alluding to is the massive changes that we will see over the next uh, three to five years, which is organisational change. So any IT infrastructure needs to support that organisational change. We've, we've mentioned briefly structural change, organisational change, but something we haven't covered is um, the role of the patient. Yeah. Um, there's a lot of focus on the patient, patient um, leading their own care. Oh, yes. um, where do you see IT in all of this? Now that's um, very exciting, you know, how long have we got really, because uh, this, uh, this is sort of the holy threat. I think that um, the focus on patient-centric or self-service, um, and I think that um, patient empowerment is very important. And the two areas I think this will work in is when, when patients, it came out, uh, um, so, uh, uh, the minister said, Max said that um, a four-hour waits from A and E departments could be abolished, and also, interesting, the 48-hour being seen by a GP with 48 hours is going to get in the window. Now, what is that going to do? That's, so that's an interesting challenge. So self-service about me a, being able to book my appointment with my GP in a time slot that suits me, 
is going to be the first of impact. There's others, tons of others, which is around using devices in the home, sort of assisted living type of thing. But if you think of uh, the number of diseases that um, people would want to monitor themselves with, rather than going to the GP and rather than going to the hospital, this is where the time and the cost savings really come. In terms of doing that, I mean, obviously, electronic patient records play quite a big part, um, especially accessing information online, as you've mm. mentioned. Um, so if we move now on to the national programme, what's going on? I think it's been unbelievably quiet, and that's what we all know. Um, I think that um, there obviously are some difficult decisions to be made. I think also um, what um, the department and the CFH have achieved in the interoperability and the standards are excellent because I think that's something for us to build on. I think this new uh, model, or these new models are coming out, uh, I just got a feeling that uh, some of the contracts probably won't be flexible enough to cover that. Um, uh, I may be wrong because I'm not that close to it anymore. Um, and, um, but I think that uh, my feeling is that um, agility is what's going to be needed. And with the best will in the world, I don't see how to be as being agile. It's a bit bleak out there at the moment and it's a bit uncertain. Um, is this a good time for suppliers? I mean, you mentioned there that perhaps the market might open up. What's your advice to suppliers? Yeah, no, I think, um, I tell you what, I think it's a great time for suppliers. And this is um, getting close to customers. Under getting customers to understand what's achieved for them, um, and actually supporting them in their business case, because these business cases are going to be scrutinised by no other business cases have done before. I think that um, uh, you know improvement performance is still going to be uh, the mantra. I think we've, we've changed the queue. I don't think it's the first letter now. I think it's the end uh, of this. But anyway, we'll watch this space on uh, when the uh, health paper comes out. Um, but I still think that those are the key, the key targets there. Um, so I think this is, as I said, it's um, going to be a slow um, time. Um, I think for some of the smaller suppliers and some of the consultancy companies, this probably is um, open, is, will open up for them. So if you're in consultancy, if you're a small organisation, a large organisation, I think this is your rich pickings. Okay, thanks very much, Jeremy. Thank you.